All right. We landed. We're here in Beijing waiting for our car to pick us up. We got four meetings before dinner and two after dinner. Uh, we're going to be here in Beijing speaking, interviews, uh, meetups, and just very excited to be here with the crew. First time in China for them. Uh, we're going to learn a lot. Uh, it's so nice. I really want to thank all the Chinese students and companies for inviting us here. We're going to have a great trip. Uh, enjoy Beijing and Shanghai. Welcome. Good to see you again. Nice to see you again. I was hoping we could pick uh, one thing that we could start with because we'd love to work. I don't know if it's with the Olympic team or wh whatever is the lowest hanging fruit. I'd like to pick one thing that we could start working on. Yeah, we'll always have plenty of them. Just being spoiled here in Beijing. Great meetings, great people, great fun, great city. Uh, looking forward to uh, day two tomorrow. This is the forbidden vlogger here with the forbidden city. Your favorite square at Tiananmen Square, and uh, we got a busy, busy day going to the university to speak, meeting faculty and students, and uh, we have WeChat and LinkedIn and esports. We got so much going on today, and we're doing it with my family and friends, which makes it even better. Perfect weather here in Beijing. Really looking forward to utilizing our time efficiently and effectively, and uh, really trying to help and inspire people. Remember, two kinds of people those who manipulate and those who motivate. It's like a huge difference between uh, American sports and China sports industry atmosphere. Yeah, it's much more evolved. I uh, use the analogy of food. Uh, in China, in China, the chefs have been creating culinary art for thousands of years. The delicacy in the way that it touches the palate is extraordinary. There's five different tastes in your mouth when you're eating. In America, we're infantile. 200 and some years of different foods, but we don't have the uh, depth in the culture, right, of, in the knowledge, the, the subtleties of success. That's how the professional sports uh, are comparative to the United States, where we have created these sports, we have built businesses around them, multi-billion dollar industry, and the rest of the world is catching up uh, to understand how to monetize the content, the access to that content, in the mediums, the stadiums, arenas, TVs, phones, etc., in which we view that content or experience the content. Otherwise, the emotional aspect in which I talked about earlier is very similar. That people are emotionally attached to sports, they love sports, they want to work in sports. There's an irrationality of an involvement and attachment to sports. The reason that the NBA could make that investment and continue on is because the owners are a billionaire's boy club, is they have an extraordinary amount of money. So what's gonna to have to happen is some of the investors here, some of the companies that have uh, what we call in America FU money, money they don't care about, that they can keep investing, are going to win really big. Because just as, if, as the NBA has built a brand over 28 years, so will other brands be built here, whether it's NHL, MLB, uh, Esports, action sports, we, we know that the human nature, the emotional aspect of sports is the same, whether you're an American, Chinese, or European, it doesn't matter. That is at the core of two things, yeah. your ego, yeah. mm -hmm, and two, the truth. And th those things 
they're similar between every nation in the world. That's why the Olympics have been successful for thousands of years, right? Because we deal with those components. And so those who are out there that want to invest and have the wherewithal to stay in business, you can benefit greatly by making the investment in the IP here in China. And sooner or later, the truth will come out. What we need to do here in China is to educate the CEOs, <laughs> educate the CEOs of the companies of the benefits of supporting teams, leagues, and organizations, of benefits of creating, you know, I know, for example, basketball camps are, there's so many for youth. This new generation, uh, eSports is another area that we'll see. So as the companies start figuring out how to monetize uh, and, and build those brands profile and awareness of the sports, you'll see that more people will, because there's great consumers in China. They're just buying the wrong things right now. These brands need to, to grow and exponentially, there's so much opportunity to make money in sports in China. Huh? Like so 100 bucks so each. Yeah. Let, let's not jerk around. How about just 300 I'll American? Friend, oh, come on. Okay, I'll, really, really I'll give you 300. Three. No, 300. You, you three. know you can take 300. That's 75 three, each. Three, three, 300. 300. I'll go look. I, I'm going to look. I'm going to look. You know it. Okay, okay, okay. All right, we're good. Thank you. I'm clever, yeah. I'm very clever. Yes. Ah, you like basketball? Yeah, I love basketball. Ah, love line gems. Always have the cash, always <laughs> walk. If you're not ready to walk, you're not ready to buy. Lice, I'm on my last price, okay? That's I my last price. price. I'm, 200 is my best. Me. Can you listen to me, my brother? Okay. 200, you got it. Okay, I'll give it. 200 is all I have. Wait, 200, okay, 200. Stop, all right, deal. Thank you. <laughs>
the United States, especially they're like NBA teams. Yep. I'm not like working in San Antonio Spurs. I just want to kind of be a business bridge between them. Oh, and, who's you know, trading by the corporate partnership, that sort of thing. Yeah. See what Houston did. What are some like suggestions or advice you may yeah. have? Yeah, so, you know, I, I see three real great opportunities here mm -hmm. to bridge uh, Beijing or China yeah. with the U.S. One would be the NBA. Yeah. So you can mirror what they did with the Rockets now that you have traction yeah. profile. You hit chasm here. It took 30 years or 28 years uh, when David Stern brought basketball here. He thought mm -hmm. it would happen a lot faster. Mm -hmm. But there is a brand. There's a following. And, you know, it's people like you that can really take advantage of that yeah. because you understand this culture, you understand the nuances of it, the subtleties, the difficulties, but you also understand the American marketing system that is starting to, to catch on here. And it's a huge opportunity. So to take another team um, and teach them how to brand and market, because they'll be just as popular, uh, just like NFL in London, which is something that we helped with. Um, so that's the first. The second would be esports. So, you know, yeah, to understand, we're going to do a lot of meetings here for esports while I'm here, and I might uh, buy a team or a part of a team while I'm here that be the first American owner um, of one of the Chinese teams. But I think if I was your age and wanting to get involved in sports and make money, help people, and have fun, I would think outside the box and, and get involved in esports because the money's going to be incredible and it's only going to grow. <laughs> and you could be the pioneer, knowing what you know, and bridge that gap because it will be a global. The internet's global, so streaming's global. Um, and then third, in the short term, if you have some ideas or some relationships to the Olympics, I think there's a desperate need for people that understand American and Canadian winter sports and understanding how to market snowboarding and hockey, uh, getting the kids involved. I think. It's a great way to, if there's a bigger firm here that you want to get involved with or one in America, it's a great uh, distinction in the marketplace for all of you uh, to take advantage of. So those would be like the three things um, that I would focus in on yeah. if, if it interests you and you're passionate about it. Yeah. yeah. So hopefully that helps. Yeah. And two, I'm available. So I don't sleep much. You guys can email, call me, WeChat me, whatever you need. Because, you know, it's, I tell people it's consistent uh, help that people need. It's, it's nice to meet Lee and I, and we give speeches one time and, and answer one question. But uh, especially with young people, it, it really helps when, like, a real-life opportunity or a real-life question comes up that you have someone you can, you know, that has made so many mistakes that you guys don't have to make them. I can just tell you yeah. <laughs> from the mistakes that I've made. Just say, hey, Dave what would you do i got this job offer or this you know what do you have any advice so please don't lose my card and i do get back to everyone now you can reach at me if you lose it yeah, but I always ask for yeah. Ray. Ray. yeah well ray's famous right yeah yeah, yeah. What, like he's really helpful like uh, he is famous isn't yeah. he yeah, yeah. one of you should start representing ray i think that's where the real <laughs> money is you don't need any certificate or anything All right, keep on trekking on after a great meetup at Peking University. We are now at Sina. They have the rights to MLB license here in China. This building is extraordinary. It goes on forever. I'm very excited about the meeting. Just finished up at Sina. Now we are at my summer palace. Nope, not mine. We're in Beijing at the summer palace. It takes about uh, two hours to walk all the way around this man-made river. And uh, to me, it's one of the best places in Beijing. Once again, coordinating to make sure everyone's having a good time uh, while we're doing a lot of business in these 20-hour days that we're working in Beijing. Off to Shanghai tomorrow. We're gonna have a wonderful dinner and a couple more meetings left. And I have someone shadowing me, so we have Lily, from Pepperdine, so meetups are great. I appreciate everyone, thank you so much. Enjoy the Summer Palace.